What's up guys, Mike the Tech here. Welcome to episode 11 of our Game Maker Studio 2 shoot 'em up tutorial. And uh, this time we have another comment or suggestion. Uh, this time Tweety Gosling 89 who asked for a shout out, says, uh, my boy, can episode 10 be like a tutorial for how to make the enemy move sideways and how to make them explode when you kill them? Thank you. Um, no, episode 10 was already in the queue, so you can't be in episode 10, but we're in episode 11, so you could be there. <laughs> so we are going to do that today. Um, and it's pretty simple, but first we need to go over here and uh, go to kenny.nl. And I'm going to re-download that asset pack, uh, the space shooter one. Because I recently cleaned my computer and I don't have it anymore. So let's just download this. Let's extract it, and you'll be using whatever you happen to use. I'm using WinRAR, you could use uh, just the Windows Explorer zip method, or WinZip, or whatever you prefer, but uh, just extract that somewhere. So we're going to add a second enemy sprite. Thank you again, Kenny NL, uh, Kenny.nl, for all the graphics uh, that you let us use because it is very helpful in prototyping. So let's go grab another enemy graphic. We had a green one, so let's choose a blue one this time. Uh, this is the graphic we used the first time, so we'll use this one the second time. Yes, we'll put it middle center, and we'll give it a collision mask of a circle. Why not? That looks all right. What do we give our, our other enemy? Let's see. Collision mask. Yeah, we also gave it a circle. Good. So let's call this SPR enemy 2. And then let's duplicate our enemy 1. Change the sprite. And call this enemy 2. And now we have a second enemy that we can adjust its movement behavior for. So we're going to go into the create event. And we're going to give it a... Um, a new variable called h speed. So let's call this h s p d because h s p e e d is already a built in variable and I just don't, I prefer not to mess with those uh, because they can be tied into other things and it's just kind of weird. We're going to put this at 5. Alright, so now we have a, a speed of 5 and we need this in a variable because we're going to mess with it later by um, giving it the negative. 5 and positive 5 by just switching it back and forth so that it moves to the left and then moves to the right as it's going down the screen. So now that we have that, we want to start an alarm. So we'll put an alarm countdown for 60, which is about a second, right? And then we'll go into our, uh, let's see, yeah, we'll add an event for our alarm, alarm 0. So after 60 seconds, this is going to run. So we're going to assign the variable hspd. And instead of putting a number here, we're actually going to put minus hspd. That way, if it's 5, it'll become negative 5. If it's negative 5, it'll become positive 5. It'll be the opposite of whatever it happens to be at that moment. And then we'll reset the alarm to 60. That way, um, it does it all over again. And now... Um, because we have H speed flipping back and forth, we actually need to, need to use it somewhere. So in our step event, we have our jump to point going on the Y axis, uh, 7.5 uh, pixels per frame. Um, so we're going to do the X axis at H S P D and we'll set this to relative. Now when we, excuse me, when we hit play, <laughs> Nothing's going to happen because I forgot to put the enemy in the scene. But uh, we'll just make sure that we don't have any syntax errors. Nope, seems to be running fine. And there's our enemy. So let's go ahead and spawn this second enemy. So we have... Here we go. In our first alarm that comes up every 120 frames, we spawn enemy 1. So we're going to duplicate this and spawn enemy 2 as well. Just two enemies at once. It'll be pretty difficult. So we'll duplicate it and choose enemy two. And that'll just be so we can test it out. Alright, 
so now that enemy is going left and right, while our other enemy is staying in one position. But as uh, Tweety Gosling 89 said, the explosions leave a little bit to be um, to be admired. There's not really an explosion graphic or particle effect or anything like that. And we will be getting the particle effects later, but not quite this soon in the tutorial. Uh, so what I'm going to show you guys how to do is um, create an explosion object that will spawn every time you want to destroy an enemy. So uh, we'll go ahead and create a sprite. And we'll import. We'll go to, let's see, effects maybe? Where's a good explosion? Damage, no. Lasers, no. What we can actually do is we can grab a explosion from the tanks pack because I know that Kenny has a tanks pack in here that has an explosion. So let's go to tanks. And here's one. Yeah, we're going to use this explosion right here. That looks pretty cool. So we'll hit download. Extract it. And now we can import that explosion. So let's go to our downloads. Kenny Tanks Pack. PNG. Retina for the large size graphics. And then we'll grab these three. These three look pretty cool. So we'll hit open. Yes. We'll set the um, point of origin to the middle center. And we'll check the speed. That's pretty fast. So we'll slow it down a little bit. That's good. About six frames per second. And we'll close. Well, we'll actually name this SPR Explode. And now, in, we can create an object for it. So create an object. OBJ Explode. Give it that sprite. And we'll add an alarm. And in the create event, we'll trigger that alarm and say in five frames, or actually six frames, uh, let's go ahead and destroy itself. So in our enemy, in our collision event, where we destroy the instance if the HP is uh, less than a certain amount, so if HP is less than or equal to zero, destroy the instance we can actually spawn our explosion. So above destroy instance, spawn, explode relative to wherever your player is currently at. I mean, wherever the enemy is currently at. And we're going to do that same thing for enemy two. And this might look good, it might not look good, but that's why we can tweak it with different iterations. So bear with us if it doesn't uh, look great the first time we run it. Relative, relative. Great. So now we have uh, when HP is less than or equal to zero and both enemies spawn an explosion and then destroy itself. And our explosion should destroy itself in about five frames, which is pretty quick. Maybe too quick. We'll see. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. So now. Whenever we blow up an enemy, we have an explosion graphic, right? which looks a lot better than what we had before. We can actually, <coughs> excuse me, we can actually expand that out a little bit and change this alarm to maybe uh, 15 and see what that looks like. Maybe that's too long. No, that looks great. There we go. Cool. So now we have an explosion when we destroy enemies. It's not super fancy, but depending on who's doing your graphics, or if you are doing your own graphics, or if you're using particle effects, or if you're using something like Geon effects, 
Um, it can look very, very cool. We'll also be adding screen shake later on to later episodes so that when explosions happen, the screen shakes and it's a little bit more immersive and you get that game feel part of it. Um, but until then, thank you so much for watching and uh, thank you TweetyGosling89 for the comment and suggestion and have a great day. Peace.